this episode, we finish attaching the gussets. We modify the raised shear and we cut a notch at the chime. Hi, I'm Bill England of the Ambler Odyssey's YouTube channel. I am building a George Bueller designed 48 foot wooden troller yacht here in the Sea Clamp boat shed in the backyard of my Summerside, Prince Edward Island, Canada home. When completed, we will sail the seven seas in search of adventure. With the plywood gussets cut to the required frame angle, we can now permanently attach them to the frame timbers. The hole locations for each of the 8 by 5 16 by 6 inch galvanized carriage bolts are marked to ensure proper spacing before the holes are drilled through the gussets and the frame timber. To ensure a very strong and permanent fit, the gussets are glued to the frame timbers before being bolted. This glue bolt combo will be used through the majority of the hull structure. With the bolts driven in and the nuts tightened, the frame has its shape. Here we go, first bolt hole. Starting out, you tend to buy what's cheap, what's on sale, but you quickly find out there's a reason it's cheap. It usually has something to do with not being very sharp. So that does it for today. This is a short day, but uh, we've got the bracing on, frame 34. First gusset bolted in. 5 16th bolts, six inches long. Uh, there's probably about an inch uh, sticking out there, but we'll uh, Eventually that that'll be just be cut off that the extra length there, but uh, yeah pretty happy about that Good day in the boat shed. So here we go putting on the port gusset of frame 34 uh, The starboard one is on um, <laughs> I Always learn from the first time doing anything um, I forgot to glue it before I bolted it so I had to take the bolts off put the glue on it's hard to get the bolts back in so lesson learned these port gussets they're on they're screwed in to hold them in place I have uh, the clamps on to hold the bottom gusset in place while I drill the bolt hose out so here we go see if I can get them straighter than the other side
not. <laughs> so this one I just realized is probably not a good spot because, well on the sides it should be because it's just a planking in the bottom. I can't get too close to the bottom, the outside of the bottom frame because there'll be notches uh, cut in here for the build stringers. Build stringers will not only help with the structural integrity of the hull, but also provide a backing for the hull planking to be attached to between the two foot frame spacing. I'm finishing up frame 44 today. I uh, glued these gussets up yesterday so we'll get them attached. The bolt holes drilled, uh, the bolts inserted, the, uh, the brace is already attached. drilled, the gussets are removed. side of the frame onto the bottom gusset again for the extent of the glue. Tempting, no cats have been glued to the boat yet. it in place the bolts are fed into the bolt holes they are left just poking out of the bottom of the frame timber to be able to line up the bottom gusset with them
and with the nuts tightened down, the gussets are permanently attached. When we laid the frame lines back in part one of this framing series, we saw that between the shear and the raised shear marks, the frame is vertical. This can also be seen in various other plans diagrams. The first step in modifying the side timbers to run vertical is to trim the top just above the raised shear mark. This is done by transferring the marks from the table onto the timber, then cutting them horizontal to the base of the framing table. Alright, so I'm about to cut the raised shear. So above this line is excess. The shear line here, I'm going to cut this excess off. Murphy's Law. The blade on my cirque saw is about one eighth of an inch shorter than the two and a half inch thickness of the frame timbers. The next step is to transfer the shear and raise shear marks onto the top timber. Connect the dots and you have a vertical line. Remember this vertical line is to the outside of the hull planking, so by using the planking block this vertical line is transferred inboard to where the physical frames will be. shear and raised shear lines, the outside of the planking, the thickness of the planking one and three quarter inches, just put some marks down, drew that line. So now this line from the shear here will be the cut line. So later on I'll cut that and then theory, I should be able to just flip this over and then this will maintain its five inches of thickness. Let's see. I knew I should have listened to Mr. Adolph in grade 10 geometry class. an inch merle 3.2 mm we have achieved vertical because of the double cut, a little smoothing was in order.
Thanks to the magic of geometry, we have a vertical line outboard and inboard on the frame. The wedge is temporarily screwed into place. Later, 5 16 inch bolts will be inserted. Recall that the longitudinal line where the side and bottom frame timbers meet is called the chine. In our case, it is a hard chine as opposed to a curving soft chine common in sailboats. The chine will provide a significant longitudinal support running from stem to stern made up of three layers of three quarter inch thick wood stock. As the chine is not hull planking, a notch must be cut into each frame to inset it. The plans give the measure of this notch to be two and a quarter inches wide and two and three quarter inches high. I made a jig to these measurements to be able to mark out the line on each frame. These lines were extended along the outboard side of the frame to make lining up the pull saw easier. Although cutting each chine with a pull saw was somewhat time consuming, it left a nice flash cut. Very last chine notch to be cut on the very last frame. And just like that, that's how you build a boat frame. Join me in the next episode, the fourth and last in this series of building boat frames. I discuss the difficulty frame 2 gave me, as well as explain the double raised shear wedge cut needed for a few frames. And finally, I pass on a few lessons learned from building 23 boat frames. For a front row seat on this do-it-yourself boat build project, please like and subscribe to the Ambler Odysseys on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.